illusion of moral judgment beneath himself. Moral judgment is illusory. This demand follows from an insight that I was the first to formulate. Uh, he's not afraid of egoism, you see. Any rejection of egoism would simply be an attack on himself. Keep that in mind. He's a thoroughgoing egoist. Uh, but the first to formulate this, there are altogether no moral facts. Moral judgments agree with religious ones in believing in realities that are no realities. Morality is merely an interpretation of certain phenomena, more precisely a misinterpretation. Moral judgments, like religious ones, belong to a stage of ignorance at which the very concept of the real and the distinction between what is real and imaginary are still lacking. Thus, truth at this stage designates all sorts of things which today we call imaginings. Moral judgments are therefore never to be taken literally. They always contain mere absurdity. Semiotically, they remain invaluable. Uh, semiotically, that is to say, they are a sign of something. They reveal, at least for those who know, the most valuable realities of cultures and inwardnesses which did not know enough to understand themselves. So we think our values are objectively real in some way. For those who understand, realize it's uh, simply the wishful thing. Plain language, mere symptomatology. One must know what it's all about to be able to profit from it. Okay, so um, no such thing as truth, uh, no objective moral qualities, no basis in reality for moral knowledge, no basis for any kind of knowledge. Now, you see why I write on the board Nietzsche, parenthesis, uh, and postmodernism? Because I suspect that in the radical postmodernism of our day, um, it's uh, Nietzsche who's the most single influential force. That is to say, the postmodernism that has uh, turned fr be from uh, more modest epistemologies still want to make truth claims, but more modestly so. Um, the radical postmodernism of today has turned from that, from talking about truth altogether, to essentially power politics. You see. And the politicization of the university, which you read about in the press these days, is simply in the Nietzschean will to power of certain inter interest groups. You see. Um, turning itself uh, inside out in order to um, assert that sort of thing. So we create our own truth by virtue of the utility that we force upon those who oppose it. Politicization. Okay, does that, uh, does that make sense? You see where he's coming from? I should say where he's going to. Nature. Okay. Um, he says the same sort of thing in other places. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, here's one. Uh, behind logic stand value judgments, or to speak more plainly, physiological demands for preserving a certain kind of life. You see, all your arguments prove is something about why you find it necessary to do that at all. And uh, he speaks of positivism with its objective empirical data as a democratic self-glorification of the free intellect. Democratic because anybody can gain empirical data. You see. And skepticism <coughs> as a vague physiological quality which in common language is called nervous weakness. A sickness that lacks decisiveness. Lacks the will to truth. You see. If you don't have the will to power to assert something is true, 
um, you're weak-willed, nervous weakness. That's sick. Yeah. Well, um, and uh, if on the other hand you say to Nietzsche, well, is all this that you're telling us true? You see, I remember asking that in a graduate school course one time. Uh, to which the professor responded, ah, oh, Nietzsche would just have a good belly laugh at that. And in fact, I find um, in one of his right, one of his books, he says, um, one repays a teacher badly if one remains nothing but a pupil. I bid you lose me and find yourselves, and only when you've denied me will I return to you. Get the point? The one thing Nietzsche wanted to insist is that nothing is true, not even what I'm telling you, not even that. Now, uh, you know, that um, obviously poses the old um, uh, liar uh, dilemma uh, in, uh, from antiquity when um, a certain Cretan says, all Cretans are liars. Now, if a Cretan tells you all Cretans are liars, is he telling the truth? If he's telling the truth, he's telling falsehood. If all Cretans are liars, then he's a liar. But if he's telling you a falsehood, then he's not telling you the truth, that all credence are lies. And it's not true that credence are lies. You see, and you've got that uh, dilemma. Well, similarly, Nietzsche, you don't know what he means. Beyond repudiating the quest for any kind of knowledge, truth. And... Um, he uh, is particularly emphatic about that when it comes to ethics and religion. I think that's particularly plain. Okay. Well, I said that he deconstructs various theories about the universe because, of course, deconstructionism is um, post-modernism in literary interpretation. <coughs> the interpretation of anything. Okay. Um, do you want to comment at all about Nietzsche, Kierkegaard? Uh, yeah. Jess. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, keep in mind that um, Nietzsche's underlying thesis, and don't ask me if he thinks it's true, he thinks it's useful at least, you'll see. His underlying thesis is about the will to power. And it's biologically rooted. This is his useful thesis. Now, in that case, what... Um, drives the evolutionary process is not the desire for some conformity. You see. It's not the desire for a harmony and resolving all of the adjustment problems. What drives it is, if you like, red tooth, bloody claw, we shall overcome. You see, so not Darwinism but rather this vitalistic, what in Bergson is called creative evolution, sudden outbursts of novelty that are unpredictable in terms of all the mechanisms. Okay. That biological vitalism was um, oh, popular through the 19th century until about 1940, 1950. Um, the... Um, 
gradual development of biochemistry and the recognition of uh, all the Wits, uh, what is it, the Watson Crick uh, material and so forth about um, DNA and such like. Um, that so um, outdated vitalism, you'll see, that we no longer viewed life as itself a creative force distinct from the material elements on which it works, but rather life as a function of certain highly complex biochemical compounds. Different view. So vitalism is not very popular now. Oh, the emotivism in his ethic. Yeah, I should have linked that up. That last um, thing, there are no moral facts. That is to say, there is no truth about right or wrong, virtue and vice. Uh, there, there are no objective moral facts at all that can be known. Well, what then are moral judgments? Um, expressions of emotion, of will to power or weak willedness, as the case may be. Yeah. Uh, what are we doing when we approve of something or disapprove of something? You see, we're, we're asserting emotion about that. So you get this emotivist interpretation of ethic, uh, which is paralleled, of course, in positivism, as we'll be finding out in the Anglo-American tradition. Um, it's not simply a, a subjectivist ethic. Ethical subjectivism is the view that when I say something is right and wrong, I'm talking about my subjective attitudes. No, for Nietzsche, you're not talking about your attitudes. You're just venting them, putting them to work. That's something different. Okay, um, yeah. Um, what does Rorty, no. Yeah, Rorty draws on a number of sources of whom Nietzsche is one. Dewey is another. Um, Wittgenstein is another. Uh, so there's a whole potpourri of things. Does Rorty see Nietzsche as making truth claims? I don't think so, but I'd want to go back and check Rorty on that. Uh, okay, now I suppose that an inverted Platonism would be to the effect that theory is down here, or better still, ideology is down here. Would that be it? And um, factual assertions are up here. So that in that sense, the factual assertions we make are driven by our ideologies. Okay, now you see, I think that would be um, sort of Nietzschean if you're willing to say that the ideologies are basically expressions of will to power, emotion in that sense. Yeah, and that perhaps is helpful because it helps you to see that there are similarities between Nietzsche, Freud, and Marx. Um, do you get that? Uh, you, you know this much about Nietzsche. You, you know something about Freud, that he talks of the subconscious. Uh, 